Erev Tov Chabrim, I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. In Israel today, the residents of Amona have been in the process of being evacuated by police. A very, a very sad situation that is happening to the residents here who have been in this uh, residential area for about 20 years. Of course, Amona is in what is considered by many a disputed side, the West Bank, uh, something that Israeli News Live feels is an error a part, on the part of the United Nations. Uh, the police here today uh, were demanding the evacuation of the residents inside of Amona. And, of course, in some cases, although you may not see it on the news, force is definitely being used, of finding a way to be able to coerce the people to leave. Uh, before we get into our own opinion about this particular situation here happening in Amona, I'd like to share with you some photos there that we ran across on Amona underscore in, for E-N for English there. Uh, this picture here, police violence in Amona, they know what to do. This young lady right here, uh, who was uh, actually, you know, looks like got hit or something by uh, the police there. More of a close-up here on your screen of the uh, photo there. Again, police violence in Amona. They know what to do. A uh, young girl here that is a resident of Amona there. Not only, uh, Amona has really reached out to a lot of uh, the world ever since far left wing uh, uh, groups inside of Israel have pushed to try to remove the Israelis that are living in this area. Even Mike Huckabee visiting Amona about two, two and a half weeks ago in solidarity there with the people. It says right here on Mike uh, Huckabee's uh, own tweet there, Government, Governor Mike Huckabee, pray for Israeli city of Amona where I visited two weeks ago that there will be spared eviction over UN pressure. And that's exactly what it's come down to. It's United Nations pressure. And this is what really kind of uh, is is really I don't, I don't even know the right word to express it. Is it uh, provocative or, or whatever the case may be? But it reminds me that when we see this disputed area, that there was a far left push to remove the, the residents of Amona out uh, of this area here, claiming that there, were, uh, a, a, there was a couple of other people that actually owned it. Supposedly, Palestinians owned the land. However, there is a dispute over this claim if this was really any validity to the claim in the first place. And therefore, it became a political football for the United Nations, especially to move the Israeli citizens out of their, their homes that they've been in for the last 20 years. Now, the reason why we make an issue of it as well, because Israeli News Live is known to stand with the Arab people in the times that they are abused and uh, outright done wrong as well, such as in the case of the Syrian war. We have saw that under the Obama administration that this was certainly a war that was against the Arabic peoples. We saw that. We stood for the Arabic people. We've stood for the Palestinians in time past as well when we see that they are being treated wrong too. But in this case here, when it comes to the West Bank, we like to remind the world that the United Nations, before they were change, changed their name to United Nations, was called the League of Nations. 1920, Israel was awarded, or the Jewish people were, was awarded a place called the Jewish Homeland. It was done after the second, or excuse me, after the First World War, when when uh, uh, Britain had played a major role in toppling the Ottoman Empire, and under the British mandate, they had given. The, this huge land, including everything west of the Jordan River and east of the Jordan River, and the land that is called Jordan today was given for a Jewish homeland. Two years later, though, the British mandate, the United Nations, or called the League of Nations at that time, decided to award to uh, uh, Abdullah, Hussein's son, a big portion of this land. About 71% of the land was handed over immediately to the Arabic people, creating Transjordan, the Jordanian kingdom today, that we see that Israel lost. The Israeli people, though, or the Jewish people at that time that just wanted a homeland, didn't complain too much about it. They accepted it in stride, but according to the uh, British mandate and according to the uh, League of Nations, all the land that would be west of the Jordan River would be going to the Jewish people for their own homeland. Then the Second World War started. 
And of course, Europe no longer allowed any of the Jews to migrate to their homeland. Six years, they would not be allowed to come to the land that was given to them for a homeland. Instead, they let Hitler and his final solution with Himmler try to kill off as many Jews as possible. All the while, Britain, who was in control of this land at that time and who also had given the mandate for a Jewish homeland, they began to allow, turning their head, turning the other cheek, so as it were, they began to allow a mass migration of Egyptians and now Jordanians into this land here to try to outnumber the Jewish population that was already there. But you know what a lot of people fail to tell you is that a lot of Jews had actually came from, during the Ottoman Empire, had come to buy and purchase land from their Arabic neighbors when they lived in peace together. Now they're being stirred by outside powers and still being stirred by outside powers. So I think the United Nations should live up to their obligation. Keep the promise they made. They reneged once in 1922, gave away 71% of the land. But the Israelis were willing to settle for everything west of the Jordan River. That includes Gaza and the West Bank. And you see, the Israelis are not for evicting Arabs. They're not into that same type of scenario that Mahmoud Abbas is all about if he gets control of the West Bank as a state for himself. That was awarded, by the way, in 1993. That was awarded under the Oslo Accords, so to speak, when under Yasser Arafat they become a Palestinian authority. And by the way, it was 1995, 1993-1994, by the way, is when, 94 is actually when the Palestinian Authority was put together. In 1995, this is when it was determined, I believe, by the U.S. government to move the embassy to Jerusalem. This is not actually something that President Trump has decided to do or wanted to do. This was already decided by the United States back in 1995. And it's not just going to be the U.S. Embassy, it would be other embassies as well. Kind of makes you wonder, is that part of the U.N. mandate that they were planning on making Jerusalem a city of all nations? A, a, a neutral zone, so to speak. Kind of makes me wonder what the plan really is all about. Nonetheless, the residents of Amona should have a right to be able to live in this land just like any other Jew, should have a right, according to the 1922 League of Nations and British mandate to give the Jewish homeland everything west of the Jordan River. I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. Erev Tov.